my friends are since. I've got to start this video with a couple of apologies, or at the very least explanations. The first one being that I rather foolishly decided right before filming that then was the perfect time to stuff my face full of red hot chilli pepper tackies, meaning that my mouth is now constantly filling up with saliva like some old slabbering dog, making it difficult to talk. But not only that, outside at the moment the weather is appalling. It has been blown a hilly here in Scotland for over a week or so. And whilst that isn't all that unusual for this time of year, the flat that I live in is within a building that is very old, the windows are not properly weather sealed, and so it is very likely that you'll be able to hear the wind whistling through what's left of the rubber seals, and so I apologise for that. Maybe I could wait for the weather to improve before I recorded any more videos, but given that I do live in Scotland, then that would probably mean that I would never make any videos ever again. So I'm sorry, this is just the way things are, and I'm just going to have to live with it. Now for the past couple of months I've been experimenting with quite an unusual and unique synthesizer, the Lyra 8 from Soma Lab. I do have to say a massive thank you to Signal Sounds here in Glasgow, they're a boutique electronic instrument shop and they have very kindly allowed me to borrow one of their demo units to try out and also to do some videos on, so thank you to Signal Sounds. I will be doing like a feature video or like a, a full review video of the Lyra 8 at some point. But in this video I just wanted to talk about a specific feature of the Lyra 8 that I don't see too many people talking about or demonstrating. Now the Lyra 8 is quite different to other synthesizers in the sense that this isn't really a device where you create the perfect sounding patch and then feed in MIDI notes or pitch CV to control and replicate that sound. Its focus is much more on sonic exploration. It's really kind of a drone synthesizer and because of that it's much more suited to the creation of atmospheres, ambient music and all that kind of good stuff. It can do everything from kind of beautiful ambient sounds right up to something quite haunting. And people even just like using the device to kind of meditate on because it is really satisfying just to sit for about half an hour, an hour and tweak the sounds. And that's coming from me, someone who is not a big kind of sound design or ambient music person. Many of the videos that you see demonstrating the Lyra 8 will talk about how uncontrollable or unpredictable it is and often focus just on the ambient or sonic exploration side of it. However, there are some ways that you can kind of wrestle it under control a wee bit and give rhythmical qualities to the sound. And so that's what I'm going to show you in this video. One way that I've kind of found to more neatly incorporate the Lyra 8 into an actual song production workflow rather than just exploring different textures and sounds. And so that's what I'm going to take a look at. So this is the Lyra 8 and in order to understand what I'm going to be talking about in a minute, you need a basic knowledge of what's going on here. So I'll give you a very quick rundown. First of all, we have four groups of two oscillators, so eight oscillators in total. You can trigger each individual oscillator separately using these conductive points at the bottom, like so. Each individual oscillator can be tuned using these knobs here. And then above that we've got a switch which lets us control the speed of the envelope. That is done in pairs. Uh, envelopes can either go from fast, which is kind of not fast, but it is relatively fast, like so. And that's the kind of decay time you can expect with the fast <laughs> envelope. But if I flip it up, you'll hear that the decay time for that pair gets a lot longer. Above that we have a whole host of different kinds of modulation. You can route things into other things in ways that you might not expect. And then when you combine that with the Hyper LFO up here, the modulated or modulating delay and then the drive circuit, you can see how it becomes this really interesting atmospheric drone machine. So if we play about with a few of the parameters you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. It 
It kind of sounds like something from outer space, which is very nice. However, the point I was making earlier is that whilst this is so much fun to play about with and experiment with sounds, in order to fit it into your music making workflow, if you're not necessarily someone who's into that kind of ambient, uh, you know, atmospheric thing all the time, then you need to find ways to control the sounds a bit better. And one way you can do that is by using samples or sampling the output of this. And that's what I've been doing a lot. But the other way is to make use of the gate hold input. And this allows you to send an input signal into this, which will then essentially trigger the sounds or trigger uh, the sounds in banks of four. Now, the way that we do this is that we manipulate or we would turn this hold knob and if we turn the hold knob up that means that this bank of four oscillators here sorry will then play when I send a gate signal into this. So on my modular up here I've got a clock running going into an envelope generator and in theory when I turn this hold knob up the first bank of four oscillators here should play in time with the clock so let's see if that actually works. Yeah, the hold. Now you can attenuate that using the hold knob here. And of course you can also change it depending on the envelope signal that you send in. So for example if I turn the gate decay down, it changes the kind of um, output we're going to get. And of course I can also bring in the second set of four as well. And then we can muck about with the effects. Now that on its own gives us a bit more rhythmical control over the output, which is nice because it means we can then sync it up with some other bits and pieces. And actually this kind of approach is what people who make music with test equipment often do, where they don't have control over anything but just a droning sound. By adding kind of breaks in the sound and getting rhythmical intervals, you can then start to, it becomes a bit more musically useful, at least in the traditional sense of, you know, music with drums and percussion or whatever else. And so in order to demonstrate that, I'm going to sync up this to my envelope as I've already got set up, but I'm then going to add in some drums and then hopefully you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about in terms of usefulness. So let's turn it up. I'm going to add in a kick drum, which is synced to the BPM. I'll add in a wee hi-hat. Anyway, that was perhaps not the most musical example, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can use this particular setting within the Lyra 8 to give you some more controllable melodic options and maybe it'll inspire you to go try it out for yourself. Uh, aye, that's it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.